This is the story of how tens of millions of people in 11 countries lost their mobile data access due to an expired certificate. We start our journey on the morning of Thursday the 6th of December at about 4.50am when you just started to realise that their mobile data was not working at all. When I checked my O2 device at about 9am, so several hours after the problems first started to happen, 4G attach requests were rejected due to network failure and 3G attach requests due to congestion. And this unfortunately demonstrates one of the knock-on effects of a partial network outage. So when the 4G stopped working and the mobile data on all technology stopped working, people tried other ways to communicate using their phones such as conventional voice calling, like where you enter in the phone number. So that's then what everyone did. Instead of communicating using over-the-top data services like WhatsApp or FaceTime or iMessage, instead they resorted to conventional phone calls. And the 2G and 3G networks are not really dimensioned anymore for dealing with that amount of traffic. Because typically, 2G and 3G networks are there for legacy devices that don't support 4G in terms of data and then for calls for devices that don't support calling over 4G. So the amount of traffic on 2G and 3G is typically very low because there aren't many devices and there aren't all that many calls going over it even. Whereas now suddenly you get a lot more calls and a lot more devices all trying to attach to 2G and 3G. So actually they very quickly collapsed in urban areas and even in my area which is suburban 3G especially got congested very very quickly. As the hours progressed other networks affected by this outage started to regain their 4G and mobile data services. However on O2 UK my device pretty much stopped getting attach rejects on 4G and 3G and the attach requests just simply timed out. It wasn't until about 9pm that something new happened in that the O2 E node Bs stopped radiating the frequencies that had 4G on them. So like for example, O2's 800 megahertz just stopped being broadcast from their Eno Bs, which was really quite shocking to see that this sort of 4G network that O2 has built on 800 and 1800 and 2100 megahertz just go offline, just completely disappear. By about 10.30, 2G and 3G data had returned for many people. However, due to the network dimensioning aspect that I spoke about earlier, their data performance was generally very poor to non-existence due to having to carry traffic that would otherwise have been carried by the much more spectrally efficient and spectrally allocated 4G services. It wasn't until the early hours of Friday morning that O2's 4G service resumed normally, leaving an outage of nearly 24 hours, which is pretty unprecedented. So what went wrong? Well, helpfully Ericsson released a press release about the fault that had occurred on their systems, which was an outdated certificate that affected the SGSN and MME, which I shall talk about now. This diagram shows a kind of model representation of a mobile network operator's core network. There are two main halves to it, the legacy architecture and the 4G architecture. The legacy architecture is for 2G and 3G and has separate circuit switch and packet switch domains. The former deals with voice services and the latter deals with data. There are also separate 
traffic feeds within each of these for user traffic as well as signaling traffic which are designated in different colours here. For 4G there isn't a situation where there's a circuit switch and a packet switch component it is simply packet switched and in that case the core network components get defined as the evolved packet core. In the circuit switch component there are the media gateways which handle the routing and call traffic across the core network between the MAS side and then the conventional phone network. Then there are the mobile switching centres which handle the signalling traffic for calls that start, end and maintain phone calls on the mobile network. Now let's move on to the packet switched domain of our legacy network architecture which contains the first cause of failure of this outage. So within this packet switch domain there's the gateway GPRS support nodes. Now these interface the core network with the outside world of other packet data networks i.e. the internet and in between the gateway GPRS support nodes and the mass side of things is the serving gateway support node or SGSN. Now this doesn't just interface the user traffic and signalling traffic between the MAS side and the gateway GPRS support nodes. It also has some interaction with other components of the core networks, potentially into the EPC as well, dependent a little bit on which kind of architecture you decide to go with. But undoubtedly for 2G and 3G data provision, the SGSN is absolutely critical. Although as you can see from this diagram, voice would still work because that's handled by the circuit switch side of things. When it comes to 4G and the evolved packet call, the packet gateway does a fairly similar role to the gateway GPRS support node. So it interfaces between the core network and packet data networks on the outside world it also communicates with IMS systems as well. In between that packet gateway and the outside world and the mast is the serving gateway, which in some ways is fairly similar to the serving gateway support node. So it sits between the packet handling, the packet data network handling gateway router and then the mast side of things. However, it stayed working in this case. What didn't was the mobility management entity. Now this does the signalling traffic side of things for 4G. So actually without the MME the user plane traffic routing pathways are still there it's just without the signalling none of the systems or devices get the instructions to know how to handle it and therefore the device can't function on the network without the background signaling traffic to instruct it. And that's how the 4G network went down because the 4G network is just this evolved packet core with its sort of single framework. There isn't like two halves to it. So without the MME, 4G just goes down completely. And then without the SGSN, 2G and 3G data go down. Just for completeness, there is also the home subscriber service which is a database of the customers of the network and their details to sort of authenticate them onto the network. Then that has components essentially of the home location register as well as the authentication center. And actually pre a previous O2 outage linked to Ericsson a few years ago back in 2012 was down to home location register fault. Thanks for watching this video about the 6th of December multinational network outage. It's really quite profound how something as simple as an expired certificate can lead to such a massive loss of service for so many people in so many countries. And of course another thing to note is that SIMs and mobile data services are not just used by people. In the UK it caused problems because like London bus tracking and signage as well were using O2 SIMs so obviously that didn't work and lots of service workers who use devices with O2 SIMs were 
unable to work in their normal way and things. So the impact was pretty massive from this and will probably be remembered for quite some time.